at Martin Ice Arena for tonight's contest between the Central Michigan Chippewas and the Adrian Bulldogs. Line song, my pal and partner, Parker Morris, and I'm Ryan Donnelly. We welcome you here for game one of two here inside Martin Ice Arena for this incredible contest. This, Parker, Adrian is number four in the CCWHA rankings, and Central Michigan had a very tough but very successful series the last time they came around against the Ohio State Buckeyes winning their last game 4-2. to two. What does CMU have to do to keep up to teams like Adrian? Well, Ryan, you look at their star players like Kylie Del Rey who real quick had a birthday yesterday so shout out to her happy belated birthday but they look at her and she had five points in this series uh, Ryan coming off of five goals not a single one of those was an assist she had two in the first game three a Hattie in the first and then they also looked at people like Amy Caster who had four points on the weekend two goals two assists uh, one of each in their respective games Ryan, they're looking for those players to perform outstanding again here tonight. Adrian, unfortunately, in favor or in favor of the Bulldogs, is 10 to 1 with the series history against the Chippewas. CMU is looking to make that 10 to 2 today. And CMU, like you mentioned, isn't really successful when it comes to teams like Adrian, as you can see. Starters are happening right now for Adrian. And here comes CMU's lineup. It looks like tonight's lineup will be Caitlin Williams, Gabriella Nixon, Kylie Del Rey, Tate Hutchinson, and Declan Whitus. And we do not have uh, who is in net as of right now. Looks like Bree Schroer there, Ryan, that's going to be starting in net for the Chippewas. Yeah, Bree Schroer, who's a junior from Estesville, Michigan. 11 games played, a 10-1 record, a very successful record. CMU's best goaltender, in my opinion. She'll get the start tonight as we're going to honor our country in the playing of our national anthem. Don't we love our country, Parker? Oh, well, it looks like they're playing O Canada. Oh, <laughs> Adrian there looked to skate back to the red line.
the Adrian Bulldogs about the, the national anthems. Uh, once again, we welcome you here inside Martin Ice and Ryan Donnelly, Parker Morrison. Happy to have you along with us on this very chilly and this very nonchalant, that's a word to say, Saturday night. As we take a look at the starting lineups for Central Michigan, it'll be Caitlin Williams, Gabby Nixon, the, the uh, alternate captain, Kylie Delray, who Parker mentioned, it was her birthday yesterday. So, happy birthday, Kylie Delray. On defense for CMU, Declan Whitus and Tate Hutchinson. Both players have been playing phenomenal lately for CMU. And in goal tonight is Bree Schroer. We do not have any confirmation on who's starting for Adrian as everybody on that Adrian bench is getting sorted out. This looks like Tate Hutchinson was on her way out to go to center ice, takes a tumble and a couple of teammates there, shakes that one off, laughs with her teammates. We'll be back underway in just a couple seconds for puck drop Ryan. This should be a good one. This is a very strong starting first line for the Chippewas. They're looking to hold down the Bulldogs tonight. We've got a quite a late puck drop, but we are still here, Ryan, and we're underway. And starting in, start taking that center uh, face off for Adrian. It's going to be number three, Leanna Stork, as they eventually won the face off, and Adrian will take the puck behind the net, guarded by Hutchinson. Passing it out, Steichel. Back to the Bulldog, the puck will go right to arms. The puck will stay in Adrian's way as it'll be picked off there by CNU. Trying to get it out of the zone and they do. Puck's in neutral ice, that is Storr with the puck who took the face off. Puck given to Hirschman. Hirschman who is tied with Jordan Borgayo who is leading the team in points. Uh, here comes CMU. Zoe Saudi out there. And like, and like we mentioned, we always like to mention this, you know that Zoe Saudi's out there when the pink tape is on, this is on the stick as she falls to the ground there, as Cavalier will be able to pick it up there for Adrian. Puck will still stay in the Adrian zone as Darche is able to poke it out there and be picked up by Cavalier, guarded by Zoe Saudi. Saudi able to push it there, and it's going to be a freeze by, I believe that's Emily Tratt. Emily Tratt from West Bloomfield, Michigan, has a .901 save percentage, but a goals against average is 3.6. Grace Leatino lining up for CMU as CMU wins the faceoff. Bergen trying to find Leotino. Leotino, I'm sorry, Noel Simbrel trying to find Leotino there. As Adrian will push it up the ice and the puck will go back to CMU's ice. A couple players fall into the ground. And the puck will go behind the next. CMU trying to clear it there. Picked up there by Morrison. Morrison was trying to dump it up to Chartland. Chartland wasn't able to connect, and CMU is going to take it back up here. Puck is in the neutral zone, picked up by Stroller. As Morrison is able to take it up for Adrian. Morrison is guarded by Caitlin Williams, and Mac Barnett, the captain, the senior captain, is going to have to clear the it does. She's going to take it up, and Caitlin Williams has retreats the puck, takes a shot off the right skate. And here comes Adrian Birchman. Takes a shot, and it's saved by Bree Schroer. What a save there by Schroer. She's been lights out the past couple of weeks, including, uh, including a two goal. Uh, two goals given in the last game. 17-17 left to go here in the first period. Time, uh, I'm sorry, score is currently 0-0. Zero to zero. And here comes Adrian now. And CMU and Adrian are fighting for the puck. Takes a shot, saved there by Schroer, pokes the puck out there. Nixon 
gives the puck to, to Williams and Nixon. She's gonna have numbers. She's guarded there by an Adrian Bulldog. Nixon tries to pass it up and she's not able to get it there. What a poke there by Adrian. As Tate Hutchinson now has possession of the puck for CMU, trying to find Nixon, not able to get it there. Delray trying to do the wraparound, no good. Here's a shot there and it's off the left side. Puck still remains in CMU's favor. As Darche is able to try and poke the puck out there, no good, rebound taken by Adrian. Puck stays in the neutral zone as Kylie Delray recently celebrated a birthday, trying to find Brooke Hubert, Hubert not able to connect. And it's rebounded by Robinson, Mary Robinson. Very good defenseman, Mary Robinson from Garsville, Maryland. Not able to get the puck there as Saudi was trying to push the puck up there, but not able to get it. Darche pokes it away from Adrian. There's a fight for the puck, a four skater fight for the puck, and it's gonna be tipped out there by Adrian. Hutchinson passing it back up to Saudi. Saudi had a misconnection there. The puck will go behind the seat, the Adrian net. And here comes Rebel. Rebel tried to take the shot and it was no good. As CMU will have the puck again. Players diving for the puck, not able to get it there and Adrian will still have it. There's a fight for the puck. Caitlin is just able to get the puck and here comes Noel Simbro. Simbro got his got the puck stolen by Zeppeli. Zeppeli was trying to find it find the open man and it's not able to get it there. Mac Barnett, the captain, was able to poke it away. Puck behind the Adrian net as it's tipped away by Gray. Allison Gray trying to be aggressive with Chartland as that went absolutely nowhere. And here comes Adrian. Claire Arms was able to get the puck back into the CMU zone. CMU is trying to clear it. Barnett trying to take it up, puck in the neutral zone. Back out to Aubrey Morrison. Well, Ryan, a couple good looks so far from CMU and Adrian, not able to hit the back of the net just yet, but a couple good chances for both sides. It's been a battle in the neutral zone for the past couple minutes. No stoppage in play, good line changes. Here comes Delray. Delray was trying to do some dipsy do, but unable to get it there. Here comes Williams, kicks a shot. Palmer, unable to connect there. Leah Palmer trying to, CMU just, they're just lights out when it comes to the shots as Barnett is trying to find the open skater. And here comes Adrian trying to clear the puck but no good, 13.50 left to go here in the first. We apologize, we do not have a score bug for you. We will try and get updates for you as the, as the game goes as Adrian now will have possession of the puck. It'll be Stroer. Stroer trying to pass it up to the open. That's Nadu. Nadu has possession of the puck guarded by Saudi. Nadu tries to take the shot. It'll go off the left side and it'll stay in the CMU zone. The puck will stay in CMU zone. Tries to take the shot, it'll come off the right wing. That's a little fight for the puck there. She's gonna slip and it's gonna be poked away there by Stower. Leah Palmer tried to clear the puck. It'll be no good. It'll be Harchman who has the puck for Adrian. Harchman passing it up to Cavallara. Cavallara shot blocked by Leah Palmer. Saved by the skates of Palmer. And here comes CMU. Leotino. Tried to poke it away as there's a shot there, it'll go off the left side. And here comes CMU. Here comes Leah Palmer. Leah Palmer in the neutral zone for CMU. Trying to take a shot and it'll be saved there by Adrian. And here comes Bergen. Bergen tries to take the shot and it'll be a freeze there by Emily Trapp. Ryan, again, it's a battle in the blue lines. Not a lot of action on either side. Offensively, a couple good looks, as we mentioned earlier. 
none able to go in right now. So we've got 0-0 zero, zero on the scoreboard for you. 12-13 left to go. Gonna be a face-off in the Adrian zone. CMU is able to win the face 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 off. Here comes the Atino. Takes the shot. It's loose. Puck loose up in the front as as Adrian is able to save it up there. As we had an almost a little brawl there by Leotino. The puck is loose. Hutchinson takes a shot and it's off the left side of the skates. And the puck will roll into the neutral zone. Tate Hutchinson's able to recover for CMU. Hutchinson finding Whitus who finds Leotino. The puck will stay in the neutral zone. And here comes Adrian. A poke there by Bogan. Bergen will go nowhere. Here comes Hutchinson. Hutchinson passing it up to Whitus. Whitus finds Nixon. Nixon has control of the puck. Shoved there a little bit. Here comes Nixon. Nixon takes a shot and it's saved by Tratt. What a save there by Emily Tratt. As Adrian will now have possession of the puck. It, the puck remains in the neutral zone. Rolls into the CMU zone. 11.05 left to go here in the first period. As here comes CMU and here comes Caitlin Williams. Williams has Nixon to her left, but Nixon's gonna say, I'm gonna take it anyways, and is unable to get it there. And here comes Nixon and Williams, part of that elite top line for CMU. The puck will roll to the right side. As Mac Barnett is able to recover that for CMU, the, the puck will roll again to the right side. 10.30 left to go here in the first. Ryan, this looks to be the longest time that CMU has spent in the offensive zone so far. Keeping it up is number 11 for the Chippewas, Leah Palmer. Like you mentioned, oh, there's a steal by Delray. Here comes Delray, uh, loses the puck and it's gonna be picked up by Nadu. As Adrian will roll it into the neutral zone, it's poked up by Cavallara. Palmer was trying to recover, but instead, it's gonna be picked up by Adrian. Hubert behind the net, and it's gonna be picked up there by Saudi. Saudi trying to clear the puck, but loses the puck as the puck will be rolled into the Adrian zone anyways, as it'll be picked up by Claire Arms. As Hutchinson is trying to poke it back into the Adrian zone. And here comes Adrian. They're gonna have a little a shot opportunity there as Hubert's able to save it. And here comes Palmer. Palmer trying to clear it, but unable to get it there by, by Adrian. As the puck will roll into the neutral zone. A fight for the puck, but it lost by Leotino and Chloe Darche trying to get it back in the Adrian zone, but unable to get it there. Zoe Bergen was trying to find Tate Hutchinson, unable to find it there, and it goes back Adrian's way. The puck goes back into CMU zone. What? Hutchinson passing it back to Whitus, who finds CMU. And here comes Zoe Bergen. Bergen, what a check there on Aubrey Morrison. Oh my goodness. Is it Morrison will have Puck possession for Adrian. As an offsides has been called, they're gonna make some quick line changes. Well, we appreciate your patience with our technical difficulties here. We've got the replay on that last uh, shot attempt. We've got the score bug up for you now, so we are able to finally see the score for all the Chippewa and Adrian fans out there. We've got a penalty looks like on the Chippewas. We go on number 10, two minutes. Not exactly sure what the ref signal for there. Looks I like it's gonna be a roughing, Ryan. Oh, a roughing on CMU. Not good at all. CMU though has been very good on the penalty kill. And as Palmer is able to clear it there for CMU as it'll be recovered by Emily Trott. Well, on the penalty kill, Ryan, CMU heavily relies on their captain in Mac Barnett and Leah Palmer, the assistant one, 
on the defensive standpoint to try and clear the zone for the Chippewas. They've done a great job thus far. As Whitus is able to put, poke it away there, but Adrian still has possession of the puck. Adrian takes a shot and it's saved by Brooke Huber. Or, sorry, Bree Schroer. Schroer to Abel to save it there. Wow. The first good look Adrian's had in a probably five minutes there, Ryan. It's been a battle in the neutral zone and a little bit on the offensive end for the Chippewas. Nothing to come of it thus far. 0-0, zero, zero. we've got 7.45 left to go here at Marty. And we'll head to a face-off where Adrian wins it. 1.10 left to go on the Adrian's power play as there's a glove save there by Bree Schroer. Now you mentioned about the penalty kills. Just, they always rely on Mac Barnett. And even though whenever Mac Barnett either gets a penalty, she still motivates from the bench. That's something that I've seen a lot from CMU as there's a minute exactly left here in the power play for Adrian. Well, Ryan, having that opportunity to be on the uh, Chippewa Hockey download, let's go check that out on Spotify if you haven't already. We've gotten a chance to meet and talk with a lot of the players on the CMU Women's D2 team, all of them. All of them so far have said that Mac Barnett is one of the most influential parts of this Chippewa offense and defense, even though she remains as a defensive player. And Mac Barnett is going to be a senior this year. Having Losing Mac Barnett, I believe, will be huge for this team. But CMU has some very solid leaders as Caitlin Williams is able to poke it away. And she'll find Hubert, who will find Palmer. Palmer finding... Caitlin Williams that's picked up there as an oh as the puck went over the the bench as they'll have a re face off. Just the question is where will they have the face off? 14 seconds left to go in this penalty kill for CMU. They've done a great job so far in the game of defending the net and letting Bree Schroer take her breaths, get as many breathers as possible. They've done a great job of clearing the zone to give her a break. 6.37 left to go here in the first period as Adrian will take it up the ice. And now Adrian is back to full strength. As there's a poke check there by Caitlin Williams. Williams has numbers. Williams trying to pass it. Shot! There, no good! Off the, up, off the upper glass. That was Kylie Delray who tried to take the backhanded shot and wasn't able to connect as Kylie Delray was trying to find Leah Palmer, unable to connect there. As CMU trying to, to find shot after shot, which they've done all period, and they've done a very good job, Parker, at finding those shots. As the puck will go back into CMU zone. Picked up there by Adrian. Chartland has the puck for CMU, but it's gonna be poked away by Hutchinson. Chevalier trying to find and take the shot, and she scores! Adrian gets on the board with 5.36 left to go here in the first period, and it was the alternate captain, Bria Hirschman, who was able to notch it in for Adrian. Well, we'll take a look at the replay there, Ryan. It looks like, oh, we apologize for that one, looks like the replay did not end up working. We'll head straight back to a face-off. Tate Hutch, or excuse me, not Tate Hutchinson. Grace Leotino will take that one. We'll head to the replay. Look at that shot real quick. Tries to get it out of the reach of the Adrian player. Doesn't get there. And it's an unfortunate turn of events for the Chippewas. Mac Barnett just missed that one off of her stick. They'll regroup, head back on the offensive zone, and try to even this one up. One to one. As you saw a few seconds ago, Alyssa Gray trying to take a shot as the puck will roll back into the CMU ice. CMU zone, I apologize. 5.09 left to go here in the first. As Simbro is trying to clear the puck, but the puck will be lost as Alyssa Gray will pick it up for CMU. The puck will remain in the CMU zone. Both teams try having a hard time clearing the puck as we have an icing call. Adrian doing a much better job of keeping the puck 
inside their offensive zone, making it hard for the defensive players like Mac Barnett, Liam Palmer, Declan White, as Tate Hutchinson, and those of the sort to clear the zone. They're doing their best as of right now, but Adrian's just a little more powerful on the offensive standpoint. Head back to a faceoff. Chippewas are nowhere near out of this one yet. And it's out. It's only the first period, folks. Like I said in Inside Chippewa Hockey, Episode 5, but there's a breakaway there by Palmer. Palmer tries to take the shot, and it's going to be blocked off there. Like I said in Inside Chippewa Hockey, uh, Episode 5, which you should watch. And make sure you subscribe to CCHN so that way you don't miss a stream for CMU Hockey as Williams flipping it to Nixon. And Nixon trying to take the shot or find it, Caitlin Williams, and Williams finds the puck there. Williams finding Hutchinson. Hutchinson trying to take the shot as Tylee Delray was trying to do a backhanded fun shot there as Hutchinson trying to poke the puck to Delray and is unable to do that and it's going to be taken away by Adrian. Well, Ryan, we saw Delray kind of sit in a slot a little bit in uh, games like the LTU series where she got a goal off the tip. Here comes I believe off the stick of Hutchinson. Pastor. Hutchinson had the shot there, but it's going to be blocked away by Trapp, who has been very good for Adrian. 3.36 left to go. An icing has been called uh, on CMU. They're going to do another faceoff. We'll get some fresh bodies out on the ice, get some rest time for those starters. The line will head back out, go to a faceoff. 1-0 in favor of the Bulldogs with 3.30 left to go. CMU playing a lot more offensively the past couple of minutes, getting a lot more shots off as they took one there. Adrian trying to get this one out of the zone. They do. CMU forced to regroup is Leah Palmer. Leah Palmer taking it back in the CMU zone who finds Huber. The puck will go off her skate, but she's able to re-grab the stick as Adrian gets the puck back in the CMU zone as Leah Palmer is able to try to find Zo Zoe Saudi, but Saudi is unable to connect. A good job of CMU there forcing the offsides call if that puck was grabbed by a Bulldog. Jordan Gallo has checked in for Adrian, who is tied, or well, no longer tied, who is now second in points for Adrian. Looks like a penalty delayed coming up on the Bulldogs. I believe there was a trip called, as we're gonna take a look at what the ref has to say. I saw a trip on on, um, excuse me, on Hershey. We're gonna see what the ref ends up saying there. And they will send number 13 to the Bulldogs, Bria Hirschman, into the box. Two minutes, most likely for tripping. Head to a faceoff. CMU's first penalty, or excuse me, Adrian's first penalty kill of the game. We'll see how they fare in relation to CMU's 100% one for one thus far. CMU, I'm sorry, Adrian has not been the best at staying disciplined as there's a shot saved there by Emily Trott. They've been very disciplined when it comes to just, oh, the overall penalty kill as Bershman is once again gonna be in the box. Another face off. It will be, it'll be Nixon and it'll be Jasmine Rebel. Jasmine Rebel from Mountain Big Colorado. A righty. She's been very good this year for Adrian. As Leah Palmer is going to find Caitlin Williams. Williams in the neutral zone finding Gabriella Nixon. Nixon trying to flip it out, and it's going to be picked up by Rebel as Rebel is able to clear it for Adrian. 2.13 left to go here in the first, and about a minute 25 left to go on Hirschman's penalty. Well, even though CMU has lost a puck on their stick a few times, they're very good at regrouping after the zone gets cleared from Adrian. Nixon dumping it to Delray. Delray trying to, oh, there's a trip. As there's no penalty called from what I saw, I saw a trip on Delray as they're tangled up towards the net. As Hutchinson finds Williams, tries to take a shot, and it's saved by Emily Trott. A good look from the one-timer from Williams, but we going out in a little scuffle in between the slot and the netminder herself. 
Delray was getting pushed, tripped, shoved, whatever you want to call it in front of the net, and then tripped on the way to the slot. Ryan, no call as her team erupted from the bench, clearly wanted one there. As there's another save there by Trot. From what I saw before the scuffle, I believe I saw another trip on Adrian on Hannah Bereson. Bereson. And that's what the that's what the scuffle kind of led to. She was trying to look for the penalty, but they were unable to call a penalty as Zoe Saudi has the puck for CMU, gives it back up to Hutchinson. Hutchinson trying to look for Hubert as Hubert wasn't able to connect there as Hutchinson gets it back for CMU. What a move there by Hutchinson, trying to cross up Cavalier like it's a basketball play. As Saudi is able to take a shot and it's gonna be saved once again by Trot. Well, again, Ryan, as I said earlier, even though Adrian's able to get a couple zone clearances, CMU is really good at regrouping, getting back into the play and taking more shots on goal. They've got 21 seconds left in this penalty on this five on four advantage to try to put one in the net to help even it up here with a minute left to go in the first period. Whitus trying to take a shot, another save there by Tratt. And I do want to make an apology. That shot was not the first goal by Adrian, it was not by Hirschman, it was by Madison Grimm. Madison Grimm from Colonialsville, Pennsylvania the associate captain, which notches her fourth goal of the year. As there is a second left on the penalty as, here's a shot and she scores! As I was aiming off that, that Adrian's back to full strength, Gabriella Nixon was able to notch in a goal for CMU. We're all tied up at one. Nixon with her 11th goal of the year. Well, a little dipsy doodle on the right-hand side of the slot. We'll try to get a replay for you here if we can end up getting it to work. But it'll be one to one. A great little hockey fundamental move for you from Gabriella Nixon. We'll put that one away. 40-ish seconds left to go here. CMU has a fast break opportunity on the left hand side. And here comes Kaylin Williams on that fast break opportunity. Dumps it to Nixon who just got a goal. Trying to look for Delray who is unable to connect. Kaitlyn Williams taking it up for CMU. Finds Barnett who's able to take the shot and it's gonna be blocked off the skates of Ashley Chartland. CMU, there's eight seconds left to go here in the first. Picked up by CMU, Delray. She's gonna pass it up. Williams has one opportunity to take a shot, and she does, and it's saved there by Tratt as time expires here in the first. Folks, we have a fun one here in Martin Ice Arena, and when we come back, Parker Morrison will have your first intermission report for you here in this contest, so don't go anywhere. You're watching Women's Division II Club Hockey here on CCHN.
back here inside Martin Ice Arena. Your score, one to one. A very action-packed, neutral ice play for most of the first with a couple great offensive looks from both teams. We'll start off with the penalties. Both teams are one for one on the PK thus far. Simbro and Hirschman both picking up two minutes, one for roughing. I believe the other one was for tripping in an unofficial uh, step there. Madison Grimm had her first goal midway through the first. A great, great rebounded shot off the backhander from another Bulldog. Nixon got the equalizer with less than a minute left in play off of the stick of Delray right from the slot. So a great shot from her. That'll put it at the equalizer. One to one deadlocked here as we enter the second. Didn't get much of a pregame, so we do apologize for that. So real quick, we're gonna recap a little bit of what happened in the Ohio State sweep, which was a must have for the Chippewas. They won four to nothing, a great shutout coming from the first game. Four to two on the second game. Delray, as we mentioned in uh, what we had of the pregame, at least five points in the series, which is almost unheard of in any level of play to have five points in a series. An absolutely astounding stat as Caster comes in with one point less than her, just behind her at four points. So very, very solid hockey play from both of those two Chippewas. One defenseman, one forward. And we'll take you now to the break. We'll be right back at this second period of peer action. This is CCHN. Don't go anywhere. We've got your second period of peer action right here.
Welcome you back here inside Martin Ice Arena for this contest between Adrian and Central Michigan. Ryan Donnelly, Parker Morrison, happy to have you along with us on this very chilly but beautiful Saturday evening. Now, just to recap on what happened in the first period, it was Madison Grimm who was able to notch in her fourth goal of the of her campaign this year, which takes her point totals up to 14. And for CMU, it was Gabriella Nixon who was able to notch in her 11th goal of her campaign, 27 points on the year. As we take you now to center ice, it'll be Gabriella Nixon and and it, and uh, Bria Hirschman who leads the team in points. As CMU wins the faceoff, and it'll go Adrian's way. Well, Ryan, we only saw one penalty from each team in that first period. A downgrade to what they usually put up from both teams. Adrian is usually a pretty physical team when it comes to the game of hockey. And pretty much any team you look at, D1, D2, D3, NCAA, whatever you do, they're out there and they're playing physical. So only having one penalty from both sides is a rare occurrence, especially in this league. And talking about physical players, you got to talk about their coaching staff who made this team physical. We talk Hannah Chase, head coach of the Adrian Bulldogs and their two assistants, uh, Nash Hatcher and Madison Maloney, as those are the coaches. For the 10-4 and four Adrian Bulldogs, they're going to make their case, hopefully, if, in nationals in a few weeks. As Hutchinson has the puck for CMU, will be passed back out by Declan Whitus. This front line for CMU has been very good all year, and it showed in the second half of the season. Watch out. Nixon takes a shot. It's going to be blocked. Here comes Nixon, who was able to try and take the shot, but it was off the, the puck or off the skates of Adrian as it will be taken up by Hirschman. Hirschman loses the puck, and it'll go Gabriella Nixon's way. The puck will be lost, and it'll be picked up by Adrian. That is Mia Nadu. No relations to Jay Nadu of the men's Division Three team. As the puck will roll into the neutral zone and back into the CMU zone, and it's a fight for the puck. There's a shot, and it's off the top glass. What a sh scoring opportunity there by Kylie Delray, who was unable to connect there, but still... What an opportunity by CMU. Well, their best look thus far, a great one-on-one -on -one chance as another one forms here for CMU. Here comes Darche. She's got numbers. She loses the puck, but still able to retain it. Darche, backhanded shot, looking for Saudi as there's a puck party up in front of the net as it's going to be saved off the skate of an Adrian player. Here comes Hubert, unable to connect there, and here comes CMU, a puck party in the front. Of the net, 17.50 left to go here in the second. Wow, as Saudi's able to take a shot, and it's going to be saved there by Emily Tratt. What a possession by CMU, unable to get a puck into the net, but still, multiple shop opportunities are flurrying. Well, with it being deadlocked one to one, you got to look at who has the most shots, who's in the offensive zone, for who's going to have the momentum right now, and that's clearly the CMU Chippewas. A great opportunity there from Saudi, a little backhander interception to try to put that one in the back of the net. Doesn't get that one to go, but they will retain possession here on the offensive zone. Just loses that one as it skips past the blue line. Gabby Lapore out there for CMU. Trying to get the puck back in the Adrian zone as Mac Barnett will pass it out to Noel Simbro. Simbro trying to find Nixon, unable to get it there, but Zoe Bergen is able to regain possession for CMU as the puck rolls back into Adrian's zone as an icing has been called. 17 11 left to go here in the second period. Well, CMU doing a terrific job at clearing the zone early, getting down the ice, trying to get uh, women down the ice to put some into the net. Still deadlocked at 1-1, one one, heading back to a face-off. CMU looking very fast today, Ryan. We've seen this out of them in multiple games prior. They're looking to do that exact same speed tactic tonight. As Bar Mac Barnett, the captain, looking for Noel Simbro. The puck, it's a puck chase for the puck. As CMU 
able to lose the puck there, and he'll be back into Adrian as Barnett is able to pick it up. And there's a shot, and it's going to be saved off the stick of Emily Tratt. Emily Tratt, just a reminder of her stats so far this year. She goals allowed averages of 3.6 and a 9.01 save percentage. Very good save percentage. You're looking for over a 9 for any goalie, no matter what, as Caitlin Williams has numbers trying to go to her left, but unable, unable to get it there. She loses possession of the puck, and it's rebounded by Stroer. Leah Palmer has possession of the puck for CMU. It's going to go Adrian's way. Try to take a shot, and it's blocked. Well, Leah Palmer, Ryan, has been terrific tonight as clearing the zone. Delray will send that one the length of the ice to Williams. As we saw up there, a ref had his hand up. It'll most likely be... I did not see any penalties, but I saw a ref's hand go up. It was going to be icing. They waved that off. Ah. That's Leah Palmer. Able to trip up there. Trip up Mary Robinson. As Rebels looking for a penalty, unable to get the penalty there. Chevalier and Palmer fighting for the puck, and it's going to be picked up by the associate captain, Kylie Delray. 15.30 left to go here in the second period. As there's a shot, and it's going to be blocked and saved by Bree Schroer. All right, well, while we are at this stoppage, we're going to bring in for a little bit. For the rest of the period, Joel Drucker got a shutout last night to give the CMU men's D2 team their first win of the season. Joel, we'll have you take it away. Hello, hello. It's great to be back. How are you doing, Ryan? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing, Joel? I am doing great. I'm very exhausted. <laughs> I've had two games today, back to back. But now, we can talk about this game for a little bit first. So tell me what you've been seeing so far, Ryan. From what I've seen, what I've seen all year from this team is that well, no matter what, as Darche, she's going to pick up the puck there, loses the puck, trying to get it out of the, out of, uh, just back into play as they'll. Oh, look bat. at this. Oh, look at this. Here comes one. Adrian. A two on one. She's got numbers trying to take a shot. No good. And it's poked away there by Hubert. Man, that is a relief for any goalie having your having a defender come right through. And wow. what a great save by by Schroer right there, too. Yeah, Defense good. playing well, goalie's playing well. Can't really ask much better much more from that. Now going back to your question, from what I've seen all year from CMU and from the CMU men's team, the Division Three and Division Two team. Every period, it feels like either CMU or the opposing team just has the advantage. So far, what I've seen from this game is that it's kind of neck and neck. And you saw that in the last play, in the last uh, possession of the first period by Gabriella Nixon as she was able to notch one in for her 27th point of her campaign. It's always back and forth with this team. And obviously, CMU is trying to knock out their first win of, the, of their... Uh, Obviously, they have a losing record to Adrian, and they're trying to squeak out a win. They're 2-10 and 10 against Adrian, and Adrian's 10-2. and two. Yeah, I mean, when you see kind of these uh, this swinging back and forth, hockey is all about momentum. I mean, you're not going to have the puck for the whole game, or, or you're not going to be without the puck for the whole game. It's just a matter of what these teams all do with the puck when they have it. Ashley Chartland in the box for Adrian. We did not see... Uh, what the penalty is for, but she's got a minute 23 left to go here in her penalty kill as Tate Hutchinson's able to poke it back up there for CMU, and Hutchinson has possession of the puck. Tries to take a shot, and it's off the right side, off the right moorings. CMU's able to pick it up there. Yep, this is a huge opportunity for Central Michigan. As Nixon's tried to take the shot, poking it back out, no, no good. Finds Tate Hutchinson, who's gotten a lot of shots off for CMU. Picks it right back up, shot off the left side, right back to Tate Hutchinson. Look at where CMU's shooting from. They're all they're always shooting from those wings. And if you notice, can you see how kind of that might be a little bit of an issue with kind of how the, the shooter's angle to the net is? Like, think of it like this. Think of the, you know, right in the middle. You see the whole net, right? And if as you move over, that space that you have to shoot at gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So when you think of it from a shooter's perspective like that, ideally you want to kind of shoot ideally from like you know hash mark down to the goal line and then across from hash mark to hash mark and then down to the goal line as Lapore is able to get the shot up there not off the top of the glass no whistle called as 
Adrian has possession of the puck, oh, and here pass. comes Strower. Here we go. Strower got from the stretch pass takes a shot, and it's saved by Bree Strower, able to freeze the puck. That is a huge save by Bree Strower. I know it doesn't seem like much, but those stretch passes they can be deadly, especially when you know you get caught sleeping on defense. Now, Joel, let's talk about you for a second. Last night, you and your teammates from the men's Division Two team, um, they got their first one of the season against Northern Michigan with a 2-1 to one victory, and you got the shutout. How does that feel, your first win under a brand-new head coach, and how does he feel about this? I mean, everybody is feeling great about that win. I mean, I always say shutouts are should be a team stat. Oh, look at this. As Palmer tries to Palmer's take the shot breakaway. off the right side. What a shot there by Palmer. A little bit off the wing, like you mentioned, Joel. But yeah, Nixon's able to take a shot there, and it's going to be deflected, and here comes Adrian. Yeah, but yeah, shutouts, they should be a team stat because, you know, to get a shutout, the goalie has to play well, the defense has to play well, and the forwards have to be playing defense well. Everyone has to be playing well to get a shutout. So, when you you know, you have a goalie that has a shutout, the team in front of them has also played incredibly. It's, it's basically a perfect game in baseball. And, and I do agree with you, but instead, I believe shutouts are more common than than um, no hitters, but still, I'm not a goalie, so, right. and I've never played collegiate hockey before. I've been in baseball my whole life, and yeah, well, think of think of it like this: Jonathan Quick, he has he's played you know so upwards of like 700 games so mm -hmm. in his career, something like that. He he only has about 70 shutouts. Wow, somewhere in the 70s. So I don't know the exact stat line, but that should put into perspective how uncommon shutouts are in hockey. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, once again, I am not a hockey person, but still, I love this sport as much as the next person does as CMU is able to turn the puck over. And there's Grace Liatino. Liatino, she's going to have an open shot. It's going to be blocked and deflected by Emily Trot as the puck was loose there, picked up there once again by... I see a Mew, Grace Liatino. Yep, those Has are the shots you want to have. Those right out, right kind of in the front. Remember that golden area I told you about. Right around the hash marks. A little bit outside, but still. You can see the majority of the net there from that. And here's a whistle. Let's see what hmm. it's for. Looking at the main. Looks like it's going to be an Adrian penalty. That's on number 11, Ames. What is the penalty on? That like, was... what is the penalty for? There's no call yet. Maybe there was, and we just didn't see yeah. it. I watched the the ref on the left side. Right. He just gave a a clear signal as a yes, he deserves it. As Claire Ames will go to the box for Adrian, their second penalty kill of the game. CMU once again. Very good on the penalty kill. Joel, what have you seen from this CMU team on the PK? Uh, well, right now they're on the power play. But or pet, sorry, power, <laughs> power play, my yeah. fault. But, I mean, the these girls move the puck very well. I mean, I don't know if you know this, but every time, you know, they may have an injured, an injured or a sick goalie, I go in and fill in for them for oh. their practices. So I've been on the receiving end of their power play drills before. But they move the puck quick. They move it fast. And they move it very well, and they're very precise with it. Uh, folks, this broadcast of today's game is a copyrighted presentation of the American Collegiate Hockey Association, the CMU Club Hockey Network, and more Hall Television. No reproduction, retransmission, or, other, or any other distribution of the descriptions or accounts of this game may take place without the express written consent of the ACHA, CCHN, and MHTV. So CMU has to really kind of take a... Take a moment to kind of just, you know, slow it down, set up their power play. Because if they kind of scramble, they kind of struggle a little bit. But once they once they're set in their once they're set, they have they've kind of got the upper hand in the power play. As Adrian is able to clear the puck back in the CMU zone, a nice clear there. As Caitlin Williams is able to aggressively fight for the puck as she does. As she's gonna do a little dump and chase offense, but that one didn't work as Tate Hutchinson's able to Shine the puck up there as it's going to be Maybe taken away. Look at this. There by Adrian. Jordan Gaio, who is tied, uh, leading in points. Takes, takes a shot saved there by Schroer. That's another huge save by Schroer. She just covered up right there on the follow-up attempt. Jordan Gaio tied with Bria Harshman in points with 17. 
Uh, Jordan Gallo, seven goals, ten assists with a total of 17 points. She averages about 1.2 points per game. She has been on a roll against this very aggressive and this very hard-fighting Adrian team. Yeah, she's one of those girls that you need to really look out for as a, if you're playing on Central. I mean, you got to shut down the best players on the team. And if she's one of them, he, she's got to be, you know, prime target number one. And here comes Zoe Saudi. Saudi repositions, finding Whitus. Whitus tries to take a shot. The puck is loose in front of the net, and it's going to be another save by Emily Trot. Wow. What a weird deflection there. I mean, as a goalie, there are three kinds of shots that are the hardest to stop. That was one of them, a deflection. 9.27 left to go here in the second period. 11, uh, number 11, Claire Ames for Adrian. 19 seconds left to go here in her penalty as Adrian is in the penalty kill. Watch out, second period too. So she's in the opposite box, so she's closer to Schroer. So if that puck gets iced right at the last second, Ames has a chance to get sprung for an early breakaway there. As Adrian is able to clear the puck, it'll be picked up by Declan Whitus, who finds Saudi, but it's going to be poked away by Chavalere. And here we go, as full Ga strength for Adrian. As Gabby Lapore finds Zoe Saudi, who passes it up. Brooke Hubert, puck in the neutral zone. Here comes Hubert. Hubert. Doing a little magic with the stick. Tries to take the shot off the left side. As it's picked up by Gabby Lapore. Back to Brooke Hubert on the right side. It's taken away by Adrian. De Devin Chav Chavaliere able to pick it up there for Adrian. Hubert looked like she had a little bit of room to shoot when she was kind of right in between the tops of the circles. That's the prime scoring oper that's the prime scoring area. The puck trying to find Claire Ames. Ames finds the shot as it's going to be picked up there by Gabby Liatino or Grace Liatino. That was a little bit of a weird shot. You saw it kind of got stuck between Schroer's skate and that post. That's a that can be a little scary as a goalie cuz you never know if it if it actually ends up, you know, trickling through you or not. Now, Joel, there is one question I do want to ask. How does it feel playing two sports in one day today? You play, you suited up for CMU today uh, for their second game against Northern Michigan, and then you played your lacrosse game today. <laughs> it's exhausting. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, I love it. I couldn't, I couldn't come to college and not play just one of those two sports. I've played them pretty much, you know. I played hockey pretty much all my life, and I got into lacrosse because of all my high school hockey teammates, and I fell in love with the game when the first time I played. And uh, how did the lacrosse team do today, Joel? Oh, we, we did not do very well, unfortunately. Mm. And but as we say, it's only up from here. That's, that's right. You know, like I always say, it's sports. It's anything could possibly happen. As the puck will roll back in the neutral zone and be picked up there by Adrian. Rhea Hirschman, who's been all over the place tonight for Adrian, turns it over, and it's Tate Hutchinson. Hutchinson turns the turns the puck over. So next time the puck goes into one of the zones and kind of stays there. Oh, oh look uh -oh. at this. Here we go. Adrian's got a shot. It's deflected there by Declan Whitus. Whitus, what a block there. It's going to be pushed up and pushed away by Nixon. Whitus and Williams coming up big for Schroer right there. That's that's a case of the de the defense bailing the forwards out. Kind of think of it going down a line, you know. If the forwards get get blown past, the defensemen have to step up and stop them from getting in. And if the defenseman get gets burned, then it's on the goalie. Six twenty six left to go here in the first period. Both teams are at full strength as of right now. As Delray and Nixon, or I'm sorry, Williams trying to get the puck for CMU as Williams is able to retrieve. Now, one thing with Williams is she is so good at behind-the-net play. That area of the ice is arguably just as important as the front of the net because that is the prime spot for feeding the front. Because you, all you need to do is, you know, just take a couple quick steps, curl around, make a quick pass, and right to the front for, for a scoring chance. As Mac Barnett, the senior captain, able to find Lapore. Lapore gets the puck back into the Adrian zone as it will be picked up once again by Adrian. Now, Ryan, watch how these defensemen for both teams, they kind of pass back and forth between each other every time, you know, the puck is coming out of the zone and, the other, and the, you know, they kind of recollect it and they send it, send it across the ice. They're, kind of, they're trying to spread the ice out and spread everybody out to give their players space to work. 
As Darche had a chance to shoot right in front of the net, but wasn't able to connect as Barnett tried to get the puck back, but the puck is loose in the neutral zone. Leah Palmer showing off her speed, trying to get the puck back, but Paul, but Nixon Schroeder came out to poke that away in the safety. Nixon trying to find Darche. The puck is loose back in the neutral zone as the puck will roll back into the Adrian zone, and there comes Grace Leotino trying to poke it away, but unable to get it there. Behind the net is Adrian. As a couple CMU and Adrian players Looks like fall Hay to took the a ground. tumble over there near the blue line. No penalty was called. It was just a fair fall. And there you go. Uh oh. Uh oh. Here we go. There's a shot off the right side. Unable to get it there. As Adrian and CMU fighting for puck possession. Oh. As Adrian scores. Remember how I said deflections were one of the hardest shots for a goalie to face? That's why. You see, you have someone standing right in front of the net. I don't think I don't think the Adrian player even saw it hit them. It was but Claire it Ames who was able to knock in the deflection. I don't think Ames saw it hit her stick and know where, really know where it was going. But, I mean, right place, right time. I mean, a goal is a goal. They don't ask how. They ask how many. Claire Ames able to notch in the goal for... Adrian, that's her fourth goal of the campaign, her fifth point for her this season. As the puck will roll back into the neutral zone, 4.23 left to go here in the second period. Two to one is the score. Everything's going Adrian's way as Williams is able to have the puck for CMU who passes it back up to Hutchinson, back to Williams. Williams tries to take a shot and a glove saved by Tratt. Emily Tratt, who has been phenomenal so far for Adrian. What, for, as a goalie, Joel, what have you seen from Emily Tratt today? Tratt has done an amazing job of tracking the puck. The first thing any goalie needs to know how to do is track that puck and always know where it's going. Because there's a, at, especially at this level, there's a saying that if you can see it, you can stop it. As CMU had the open chances, Track got out of her crease for a couple seconds there, but unable to connect. As that's, well. the, that's the second thing Track does really well. She makes herself look big. It makes it harder for, for players to shoot. So imagine, you know, you're coming down. Let's say, Ryan, you're coming down on me for a shot, and I'm standing right on the goal line, and you know, you're way out at the blue line. How, how big do you think I would look? Not very big, Pretty right? big, yeah. But, I mean, again, I'm 6'2", but then imagine if I came out a little bit at you. Then you'd look then I'd, huge. Yeah. So do you see kind of how that works? And now imagine seeing that net behind me, which would be easier. Ooh, as CMU, as Gabriella Nixon had a shot opportunity there, but she was unable to get it as Mac Barnett is able to get it back for CMU. 3.13 left to go here in the second. Bunch of CMU players fighting for the puck, and it'll be Tate Hutchinson able to recover. Hutchinson likes to take the shot on the wing, and it's no good as the puck as Nixon was able to recover for CMU, as Adrian has a nice clear, as Hutchinson will recover back in the CMU zone. CMU is doing an amazing job in those corner battles. If you've noticed, they're hemming Adrian in, you know, for two, three minutes at a time before they manage to clear the puck sometimes. Hemming them in the zone is going to tire them out. It prevents, it prevents Adrian from getting a change and getting fresh legs out on the ice. Ava Sachel able to recover the puck for Adrian as... Madison Grimm, who has a goal earlier today, as there's a glove save there by Emily Tratt, was able to take another shot there. Once again, Madison Grimm, her fourth goal of the year. She has a combined 14 points of her campaign this year. Madison Grimm is a name to look out for. She was one of our players to watch, um, but unfortunately we will get to those in our post-game show, she has been very good for Adrian, who has notched a goal for Adrian Here today. You go. Watch there, the D to D pass. You see how it spreads out Central Michigan like that? CMU that is basically all. That is always why teams go D to D. CMU it spreads out the it spreads out the teams and gives them room to work. One of the advantages of knowing basketball is a three-two zone. You have three players up and then two players back. In basketball, you have the three players up and then you have the two players on the blocks. You have your three best defensemen up in the neutral zone 
and then you have your two players on the face-off circles. A great defensive effort there by, by CMU as Mac Barnett is able to recover. Yeah, Barnett kind of skating around the circle. As Adrian has doing that same thing, a three-on-two zone as it's going to work there, and it's going to uh -oh. be poked away. Adrian has another shot opportunity. Good block in front. I think that was Simbro that managed to get it. Noel Simbro lost her stick, but still able to get the puck as Grace Liatino was able to poke it away there. And there goes Simbro, who was able to clear the puck for CMU. 103 left to go here in the second, and icing has been called. Now that was the second kind of shot that's the hardest for a goalie to face, a screen in front because you have no idea where that puck is because you know you have maybe one, two, three people in front of you, so they're blocking your view as a goalie. As the puck will go on the right face-off circle, it'll be Mac Barnett and Claire Ames. No, Grace Liatino and Claire Ames able to face it off for both teams as Mac Barnett will have control for CMU. 56 seconds left to go here in the second period. Lapore trying to find. Oh, as uh, there's a cheap shot there. That was a blocked shot. By Ava Seichel. Still a great save there by Leotino, but still, that one's got to hurt. Oh, yeah. They can feel that under those, uh, under those shin pads. They're not nearly as protective as goalie pads are. 26 seconds left to go here in the second. Kylie Delray has puck possession for CMU. Delray falling to the ground, but Williams able to recover, and it's back to back to Leotino. That was nearly an example of the third and final hardest shot to save the back door. As Declan Whitus was able trying to get the shot, five seconds left to go. Here, one last opportunity for CMU to, to take some shots. As there's Palmer to take a shot, no good. As time expires here in the second, two to one is the score. Adrian. Well, Joel, thank you so much for having, for being on here. Where can uh, we find you next for the men's Division Two team? Really quick. Well, we've got the weekend off. We've got next weekend off, and then the weekend after that, we're gonna have Eastern and Concordia. Concordia, that game will be outdoors. Outdoor ring. That one's yep. gonna be fun. Well, it'll be my final game of my career. And as Joel Drucker as a senior, show him love in the comments section down below. And when we come back, I'll have your second intermission report. We got lots to talk about. Uh, whether in the professional scene and here in this game. So don't go anywhere. You're watching Women's Division II Club Hockey here on CCHN.
And we're back here inside the broadcast booth here. Martin, I, Serena, Ryan Donnelly uh, here to give you your second and final intermission report of this game. Current score, uh, two to one, uh, eight in favor of Adrian. It was Claire. Um, it was Claire who was able to get the goal for Adrian. And it looks like it's going Adrian's way. Like I mentioned in the broadcast, we saw in the first period, something that CMU has done all year is that it's either CMU or their opponent who has takes over the period, and then it'll go on for the rest of the period and the rest of the game. Uh, but in the first period, it was both teams. Like, you saw Nixon get that goal, and then you saw Adrian bounce back and get that goal, and then Adrian eventually scored, and it's so far going Adrian's way. Lots of penalties on Adrian, however, which is helping CMU, but... Will that continue in the second, in the third period? CMU is known to make late game com late game comebacks, um, but will one happen tonight? Who knows? It's sports. Taking a look now uh, at our CMU scoreboard and our out of town scoreboards. Uh, so the CM, oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. CMU men's division two hockey took on Northern Michigan this weekend. They got their first win of the year last night on a 2 to nothing shutout by Joel Drucker, who joined us on the broadcast just a moment ago. He's <laughs> looking right over there. Uh, and they, uh, unfortunately, got the loss today, 6-2. to two. But they'll be back uh, next weekend against Eastern Michigan, and then their final series of the year in a couple weeks will be against Concordia. Their final game of the year will be outdoors. So make sure to tune into Black Dog Hockey. Uh, John Gervasi will have the calls for you for the final two uh, series for the men's division two team, both series, which will be free on black dog hockey. Uh, the men's division three team, unfortunately uh, they split their uh, series against the number 13 ranked university of Michigan Wolverines with the win today. Uh, I believe the score was three to two, four to two. They, that last goal counted that last goal, uh, last minute empty net goal did count. Uh, four to two win. What a great momentum win for CMU. They will be facing Michigan in the ACHA pool play tournament next weekend at Crystal Field House. Times are to be determined. Reagan Cleves and Devin Sarah will have the call for you, uh, for you, uh, for pool play and uh, for the next couple of weeks of pool play. Uh, CMU trying to push their case to make it to nationals, uh, and the winner of that pool play will move on to the nationals. Sixteen teams in pool play will make nationals in St. Louis. The C taking a look at the CCWHA. Bowling Green takes on Loyola Chicago. Marysville takes on Michigan State, and Notre Dame will take on Northern Michigan. Northern Michigan looking uh, towards the middle of the pack, making the push towards pool play. We don't know how that outcome will come, but we'll let you know tomorrow. Take a look at the Chippewa scoreboard. Women's division uh, one basketball took on the Louisiana Raging Cajuns and lost at the buzzer 54-51. to What a heartbreaking loss for the Chippewas today. And, and you can't beat it. The buzzer beaters, they do really stink. But, but they will come back. Coach Haney is very good at what coming back. Uh, from adversity, as you saw against that Akron game, although they did lose, they did, they did show flashes of greatness. And the men's Division Two team did take care of business against the old against the old the old Dominion Kings, as they were able to beat them by one in the Mac Sun Belt Challenge. Um, a very good win by Mac, who stay at second place in the Mac for basketball and track and field. They are playing at the David. He Hemery Valentine's Invitational, they played at 10 a.m. We unfortunately could not find any scores for you. But you can always check social media or cmuchippewas.com for results and quickly running through our professional scoreboard. Uh, uh, the uh, Grand Rapids Griffins took on the Mantitoba Moose 4-3 at the record of 21-15-4. They'll be taking on the Mantitoba Moose right now, actually. You can take a listen. Bob Kayser and Larry Figierski on Radio Wood uh, 1300 and 106.9 FM or on AHL-TV. 
the Saginaw Spirit took on the Owen Sound last night, a 5-4 to four win, which takes their record to 4-6-0-1. Oh, and one. and to right now they are playing the Erie Golden Grizzlies. Dylan Clark has the call for you, one on 100.5 WSGW or on CHL TV. And really quickly, the Detroit Red Wings had a comeback win against the Vancouver Canucks, a 4-3 to three overtime win. Jake Wallman able to knock in the shoot at the uh, penalty goal. Uh, they're improving their record to 27, 18, and 6. They'll be taking on the Edmonton Oilers. Connor McDavid coming into town at 9 p.m. Ken Callum Paul Woods will have the call for you on 97 won the ticket and Valley Sports Detroit. Well, that'll do it here from the second intermission report. And when I come and when we come back, myself alongside Parker Morrison, uh, he'll be back in the saddle for the color commentary spot. We'll have the third period of action. So don't go anywhere. We'll take a short break. Well, it's the third period here at Martin Ice Arena. What an exciting game we have for you in store. The third period of action. Ryan Donnelly, Parker Morrison, happy to have you on this very chilly but beautiful Saturday evening. Man, Parker, you took a break from the uh, second period. What have you saw from the Central Michigan Chippewas? We got Joel's uh, thoughts on the second period. What are your thoughts so far here? Well, I'm not a hockey player, but I'll tell you right now, the Chippewas are clearing the zone almost immediately as it gets into the defense standpoint for them. They get it out. They try to get women down the ice. It's a battle in the neutral zone, and Adrian has been able to stop them at the blue line more times than one, which has heavily affected the Chippewas coming into the third period. They're down by one, looking for the equalizer here in the third. Let's see what they can uh, whip up here today, Ryan. It's been You're right. It has been a little bit of a chilly one. Although yesterday we were a little spoiled this week, got some near 60s weather, and uh, if you're watching from anywhere but Michigan, I'll tell you right now, that is very warm for a uh, early February day as we'll head to a face-off. As CMU is known to make late, ga late game comebacks in the third period, uh, for example, OSU two, week two weekends ago uh, where they were down 2 nothing at the beginning of the third and then eventually winning. 4-2 to two as Williams has possession of the puck. Takes a shot, and it's going to be off the skates of Jordan Guyov. As Declan Whitus was able to get the poke check there, the puck will slowly roll into the neutral zone as it's going to be picked up there by Guyov. Guyov will take a shot and a glove save by Bree Schroer. Although she has given up two goals, Bree Schroer has still... Looked very good so far for CMU. A little flashy there on the glove save. Held it there for a minute. Stared her down. Telling her, I easily saw that one coming. You're not getting another one past me tonight. And Bree Schroer has said that a lot about uh, said that a lot about herself for CMU. She's been phenomenal tonight. As CMU will win the faceoff, it'll be Allison Haney who has the puck. It will pass it out to Zoe Saudi. Saudi finding Brooke Hubert. Hubert has got a defender right next to her as the puck has been deflected and will be picked up by Saudi. Saudi finding Haney. Haney trying to find a shot through traffic but is unable to get it there as Haney was trying to recover the puck, but it'll be recovered instead by Leah Palmer, another alternate captain. Palmer's trying to find Saudi but unable to get it there. Aubrey Morrison was able to poke it away for Adrian. Leah Palmer found the puck, but it was deflected. But Darche had it and loses the puck. And here comes Adrian. Tries to take a shot, but it's going to be off Palmer as the puck will roll behind the CMU net. A trip. They're taking a trip down behind the net as the puck will roll into the neutral zone. And Ava Seichel will have 
possession of the puck and it'll be back in the Adrian zone and the puck will roll back in the neutral zone as Gabby Lapore was able to recover for CMU and here comes Lapore and here comes Leotino. Leotino fighting for the puck as Simbro is able to recover there but Simbro is going to fall down and, si and Seichel was able to recover for Adrian. Looks like Leotino went off limping there a little bit. We hope she is okay. Took a tumble against the boards there. And Ryan, again, we see them about to clear the zone as they've done multiple times tonight. Almost immediately, she'll go tape to tape with another Chippewa. As Alyssa Gray was trying to find the shot there. As Bergen, what a hit! Oh my goodness! Bergen knocked out at Aubrey Morrison. As that's going to be a clean hit. As I'm Adrian surprised was that was not a call, Ryan. Uh, I thought that was a clean hit. As Adrian was looking for a hook but unable to get it there. As Adrian will have a two-on-two -two possession. Well, in Ryan's, or in Ryan's hockey, in women's hockey, Ryan, checking of any sort is not allowed. So with that hit from Bergen... I expected a uh, ref's hand to go up in the air almost immediately. Nothing came of it though. The Chippewas might have gotten away with one there. As Williams tried to find uh, Delray up at the front as Delray wasn't able to connect, but Delray is behind the net and she's gonna be able to find Caitlin Williams. Williams finding Whitus. Whitus tries to take the shot and it's gonna be off the left side as Gabriella Nixon fighting for the puck and it's Caitlin Williams able to recover for CMU. Williams tried to find Hutchinson as Adrian is able to clear the puck back into the CMU zone. As an icing has been called, no puck, no players has touched the puck before the puck went past the blue line. We knew what you were getting at there, Ryan. <laughs> we'll head now to another faceoff in the offensive zone for the Chippewas. It's been all CMU the past couple minutes. 16-21 left to go here at the Marty and. The offensive pressure from the Chippewas hasn't been let up the past few. As Brooke Hubert is going to line up here for CMU in that faceoff, and it's going to be won by Adrian. That's going to be picked up by Stroer. Stoer loses the puck. It'll be picked up by Palmer, but lost again. Stoer has the puck again for Adrian. Hubert was trying to look for the puck. As Hubert slips and a hand goes up. We have a penalty, most likely on Madison Grimm. And that one is definitely going to be cross-checking on Madeline Grimm to send her in the box for two. That was the easiest call I've seen in a minute, Ryan. Directly in front of the left. Hubert literally landed at the ref's feet. I don't know how you could possibly miss that. Tell she all the ref had to do was look down and be, oh, there you go, cross-check as Grimm her second penalty of the day will go to the box for two minutes. Man, Adrian has, they've been in the penalty a lot as we have another CMU power play as Williams able to try and find a shot but unable to connect, loses the puck right by the net. Here comes Nixon. Nixon finding Whitus. Whitus takes a shot towards the wing, no good. As Delray able to recover for CMU as she finds Palmer. Palmer finds Williams, takes a shot, no good, and it's gonna be picked up by Adrian. Kylie Delray able to pick it back up for CMU. Well, Ryan, this first line that they've got out right now is absolutely lethal on the power play. They're looking to get the equalizer here with just 15 left to go in the second. Finding Williams, and Williams unable to get it there. Another save by Emily Trott. 15, 13 left to go here in the in. The contest, 116 left to go here in the CMU power play. Well, as I was talking about how lethal this power play unit is, Ryan, it hasn't crossed the blue line a single time since the faceoff 50 seconds ago. They're going to continue this as they'll win that faceoff. As the puck now crosses the blue line and go it right, is immediately right back. back in the Adrian zone. And here comes Kylie Delray, the associate captain, just celebrated a birthday yesterday. Delray finding Palmer. Palmer back to Delray. Delray takes a shot, no good, trying to find the recover and it's unable to connect. 
Leah Palmer, what a try there as Adrian is able to clear the puck. And it goes right back One to of CMU. CMU's best looks in the past couple minutes, Ryan. Unfortunately, doesn't hit the back of the net for the Chippewas for the equalizer. But they've still got 30 seconds left to go. And they're coming in with speed. And here comes Nixon with that speed, showing off Williams with her sheet. Tries to take a shot off the right side as Nixon is able to, or sorry, Delray is able to reconsider back to Hutchinson. Hutchinson, who's had a lot of shots in this game, tried to take a shot but is unable to get it. Here comes Kaitlin Williams finding Mac Barnett. Takes a shot off the right side. Delray lost her stick there. That could have been very important for the Chippewas. She got her stick knocked out. No penalty call. As Madison Grimm comes back in for Adrian. Adrian is now back to full strength as it's going to be Caitlin Williams who is able to get the puck for CMU. Oh, what a move there by Williams. Williams doing a little razzle-dazzle but is unable to connect and loses the puck. But Hubert is there able to get the forecheck. Hubert has played tremendously, as you just mentioned, on the forecheck. Ooh, what a hit there by Hutchinson. Definitely playing more physical from both sides. We've seen CMU get away with a few solid hits, and, and that is going to be a penalty. Yeah, most likely on Zoe Bergen yeah. for roughing. I, I think that might be actually a tripping, depending on how the refs are going to look at it. Looks like from what I've seen... It most likely will be a trip or a hook. Yeah, Bergen looks like she accidentally slipped up there. Not an intentional penalty, yet she'll still go to the box. Tripped up on her own skates there. Hit the deck, and that caused a little scuffle on, on the boards. An Adrian player will hit the deck as well as they trip over Bergen. Zoe Bergen. We'll Two wait minutes. for the call from the PA to see uh, what that ends up being because I don't even think the refs made the signal. The PA looks very confused. Again, no call by the ref, but from what Parker and I think, it's most likely a trip or a hook. And there goes the hand of a ref. cross -checking. A cross-check on Adrian, it looks like. Claire Ames will go to the box once again for Adrian. On a cross check, it'll be a four on four with 2.58 left to go here in the third. Well, this is a lifesaver for CMU right now. They're gonna be on a four on four for a minute, 44 seconds. Ryan, they have been phenomenal on four on four for the course of this year. They're gonna put their best out there and they're going to hope to get this equalizer with about halfway into the second period. For CMU, they got Saudi, they got Palmer, they got Hubert, and they got Lapore. Their best defenseman, their best defensive lineup. Saudi proving that she's been a defensive unit all year. Saudi giving it back to Lapore. Lapore looking for a shot. It's going to be tipped out there by Adrian. And Adrian takes it back. This is a lifesaver, like you said, Parker, for CMU. As Hubert was able to get the defensive stop, and she does, and here comes Hubert. She's got two skaters right in front of her. Hubert trying to do a little magic and is unable to get it there. She's going to fall to the ground and lose the puck as the puck recovered in the neutral ice. Caitlin Williams back out for CMU, and it's going to be right back to Ava Seychel. Tate Hutchinson. Been out a lot for CMU here in this game. As Hutchinson, she's going to have three players right in front of her. As I believe that's going to be offsides. They'll do a their quick, call there. I thought I saw a penalty, but it most uh, it's called an offsides. As every as both teams are making no changes, keeping the same lineup out there, lining up for CMU is Gabrielle Nixon and lining up in that faceoff for Adrian was Liliana Stower. Oh, and hits her own teammate in the head there, trying to do a saucer down the way. That's going to hurt in the morning. And here comes Adrian. They got, it's a two-on-two -two zone. And here comes Stower. 
Sora tries to take a shot and it's saved by Schroer. 125 left to go here in the third. 28 seconds left to go on Adrian's penalty and 12 seconds left on CMU's penalty. Zoe Bergen once again in, uh, in there for a trip. Well, a four on four for about 12 more seconds and then we'll head to a five on four advantage for the Chippewas for the rest of the remaining penalty coming off that cross check from Adrian. As CMU now is back to full strength, 15 seconds left to go on the five on four. As the puck will be recovered by CMU, Adrian looking for a penalty. They thought Delray got the trip, but instead she just fell to the ground. As the puck will roll on the blue line, the puck will be a freeze by Emily Tratt. 10.50 left to go. It is now full strength for both teams as we have changes for both sides now. Parker, that four on four, if there was any time to score, it would have been right there, right now. But CMU all game, I believe, has been unlucky when it comes to finding their shot. They've had some unfortunate rebound opportunities that were fizzled out by the defense of Adrian. They're looking to try to get an equalizer as Schroer will save that one, but Honestly, Ryan, you're only down by one. I wouldn't be too worried. They might actually have to reset some time on the clock there, give it about five more seconds as the ref goes over. It didn't stop after the whistle was blown. We'll head up to about 10.40. As Noel Simbro says, job well done to her teammates. Getting the time gonna... clock figured out there. Looks they like they added got it. 17 seconds. Yeah, it was, it, was, 10... it was running for a while after the uh, after the whistle was blown there. It was 10.33 once the clock stopped. Now we're at 10.45. The clock was originally at 10.50. Yeah, That's definitely going to be a lot more trips out here, Ryan, as we're seeing right now. The Zamponi here at Martin Ice Arena unfortunately broke down during the break. And so the players had to come onto the ice dirty, and they're, they're definitely feeling it. I can tell if you are a hockey player, one of your least favorite things is going out on dirty ice. And Darche, she had a little bit of numbers as she gets the puck, showing off her speed behind the net. It's going to be poked away, it's remaining in Adrian's favor, and it's going to be picked up by Hutchinson. Hutchinson tried to take the shot, but it's going to go off the right angle. Like Joel Drucker said, a lot of Hutchinson's shots have been on an angle, which is hard because that makes the goalie look smaller as it, the puck will remain in CMU's zone. And as you mentioned, Parker, lots of players are falling. Bria Hirschman just fell down as she'll go back to the Adrian bench. 9.42 left to go here in the third. As Morrison is able to dump the puck out, and it's going to be a steal by Alyssa Gray. The puck will roll into Adrian's zone and CMU, Grace Leotino and Noel Simbro showing off their speed. And there's Hutchinson able to recover the puck. The puck will go to, go to Cavaliers place as CMU is just falling all over the place. Rest hand is up, most likely a trip. It's gonna on, be a hooking on, a hook on Simbro. Simbro. I saw that one coming from a mile away. She tried to get her stick in the way to get the poke check couldn't do anything with it. Got tripped up with the Adrian player, fell to the ice, and from the ref's perspective, that is gonna be a clear hooking penalty. If you're a Chippewa fan, that is not what you want. You're already down one. You don't wanna give up those useless penalties to put you on the PK, even though you are sitting at a nice 100% tonight. You don't wanna give a single goal up, especially this late into the third. So we saw he able to clear it out for CMU as CMU or Adrian will control the puck behind their own net. As you see Gabriella Nixon getting into, C into Adrian's zone, trying to push it away as they were trying to, CMU trying to look for the clear, unable to get it. It'll be picked up by Madison Grimm. Grimm passing it off to Seychelles. Seychelles finding the associate captain, Bria Hirschman. Hirschman passing it. Shot saved there by Schroer. 
CMU trying to clear it, and they do. An unfortunate bounce wow. for Adrian there off of the stick of number 12. We'll send that one the length of the ice. A very lucky bounce for the Chippewas. We'll put him at a minute left in the penalty uh, of hooking from Noel Simbro. CMU has done very good on the PK as we saw today. I don't believe that any of Adrian's goals were on a penalty kill or a power play. 100% for the night, Ryan. They are doing phenomenal here in the PK as there's a shot there trying to connect, but it's gonna be saved by Bree Schroer. Huge play by Schroer. That is something that you need to see from your goalie looking very big out there and is able to save the puck. What a save by Schroer from Essesville, Michigan. Very clutch save, as you mentioned, Ryan. Joel knows it's hard to get those redirected passes into the glove of, of your saving hand, and Schroerich does just that to keep the Chippewas in this game. Storer controls the puck for Adrian. Storer tries to take a shot. It's going to be saved there by Schroer. The puck is loose in front of the net as the puck will be controlled by Adrian as she's gonna fall down there. It's gonna be picked up by Cavalier. Broken stick right in the middle of the slot. Hate to see it if you're a hockey player, Ryan, you really do. As Stower can, has the possession of the puck for Adrian, she loses the puck there. Nice pressure by Williams. Williams' pressure works. She has possession of the puck. She will not let go. Ryan, back to a five on five here as Simbro's Penalty expires. Nice pressure by Caitlin Williams as Delray was trying to fish the puck out and trying to get the score, but unable to get it there. Nice check by Lapore back in the Adrian zone. Great defense overall by CMU. Caitlin Williams trying to do that pressure defense once again as it's going to be poked away by Delray that the puck will roll back in the CMU zone. 6:37. Left to go here in the third. Ryan, that broken stick still out on the ice. And oddly enough, not causing as many trips as the dirty ice is already. As the puck will stay in the neutral zone, as Gabriella Nixon, who is the oh-so-dangerous speedy skater, showing off her speed, going behind the net as she is unable to connect there, but Delray is able to pick up the puck. Delray. Trying to look for the shot. Nixon takes a shot. No good. Puck in front of the net. Puck will be saved once again by Adrian. And that was such a good opportunity for CMU to put one home for the equalizer. Unfortunately, no Chippewa was in the slot there. They all got scuffled up against the boards. They look to regroup now and try to finish this 2-2. Two to two. Another goal sets them up. Deadlocked at 2 and that's something that they're looking to can, uh, continue and finish out. And here comes Madison Grimm. Grimm trying to look for her teammate, but unable to connect there. Rebound taken by Wormman. Darche has possession of the puck, trying to look for Zoe Saudi, but is unable to find Zoe Saudi as Palmer is gonna pick it up for CMU. 5-18 left to go here in the third. Saudi finds Hubert, Hubert. Goes around to the right side, finding Palmer. Palmer tries to take a shot, and it's going to be saved by Trait. Hubert falls to the ground as Zoe Saudi is fighting for the puck for CMU. Good offensive look so far from the Chippewas. Nothing reaching the back of the net, but they're still looking to continue this heavy offensive pressure up, trying to get that 2-2 two two score back in reach. And CMU has the puck in the neutral zone. Palmer fighting for the puck, and she does. It'll be passed. I'm sorry, Saudi was trying to fight for the puck, passing it out to Palmer. 4.30 left to go here in the third. CMU, if they want to stay in this, I think they might pull Schroer in about a couple minutes to get that extra skater. Well, they're really trying to draw a penalty out right now, Ryan. They want to get back on the power play, get the advantage out on the ice, and try to score something here. The equalizer is such a hard goal to get in the game of hockey. Ask any player, and they'll tell you it is very hard, especially when the momentum isn't in your favor. 
It'll be Grace Liatino to line up for CMU in the power in the faceoff, and Jasmine Rebel also in there for Adrian. 4.20 left to go here in the third. Bergen looking for the clear, and she's able to get the clear. Central able to pick it up for Adrian. Adrian fighting for the puck. There's Lapore, takes a shot off the left side, picked up there by CMU. Here comes Mac Barnett. Barnett trying to find Simbro, but unable to connect. As the puck is loose in the Adrian zone, once again, as Jasmine Rebel able to pick it up for Adrian. 3.40 left to go here in the third as there's a shot off the left side. Picked up once again by Adrian. But Leotino's able to pick it up there for CMU and watch out, here comes Caitlin Williams who got that poked away. And here comes CMU. Here comes Bergen passing it up to Williams. Williams having a fight for the puck, fighting. Guile, Guile, here she goes. Guile doing a little magic. 3.09 left to go. There's a shot right in front of the net, but it's poked away by Kylie Delray as the whistle has been blown. Looks like the goal might have came off its, it's moorings. moorings there. It did. Yeah. Well, CMU is going to get that line change off, get their top line back out, and Williams, Nixon, Delray, Whitus, and Hutchinson. They're looking to put them out there, try to get an opportunity out, and then worse comes to worse, pull Schroer when the time comes. 3.04 left to go. If you want to pull your goalies, you should do it soon. And here comes Caitlin Williams. Caitlin Williams with speed, finding Delray. Takes a shot off the center of the goalie. Here comes Declan Whitus. That first line has been really good so far today for CMU. Ryan, that was the best look they've had in a long time this period. Delray just hit the mask of the goalie there for Adrian. Such a close attempt from the saucer pass all the way from the left side to the right side of the rink from Williams. And folks, don't go anywhere after the, this game coverage. We're about 2.30 left to go here in this game. Parker and I will have the post-game show. No matter what the outcome is, Parker, this has been a very, 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 very fun game. Yeah, icing called there. It's going to be sent down to the Chippewa zone. This is a key face off that they must win or at least clear the zone if Adrian gets any chances off if anything hits the net it's going to be hard for CMU to follow it up and come back all they got to do is clear and just get the puck right back in their possession as the puck will stay in the CMU zone 2.13 left to go here in the third here comes Adrian taking a shot it'll be off the right side Schroer able to get it but the puck will go past the goal line, and that might do it. Well, it what an odd goal there by Adrian. It looked there, Ryan, that the Adrian player Claire shot Ames. it down. We'll have the replay up for you right now. Here it is. On the blue line, sends it flying, goes off of the top of the post, hits the back actually of Schroer and she'll fall down on it and just with her body it pushes it in to the back of the net. Adrian sits here with a two goal lead, the infamous lead in hockey. Hopefully that keeps its name here today and the Chippewas are able to return too. That goal was by number 11 Claire Ames, her second goal of the game, her fifth in the season, makes her point total to six. 140 left to go, the magic number. Schroer is coming out of her crease. She is They're gonna have replaced now by number 61, Gabriella Nixon. They're having the extra skater advantage, and it's showing right here as Barnett able to get the shot. It's gonna be deflected. Nixon, the extra skater, able trying to get the shot, is unable to get it. Nixon showing off that aggressiveness. Nixon takes the shot. It's a flurry of players in front of the net as there's another shot there by Palmer as there's lots of players fumbling as Zoe Saudi will fall to the ground. That is 100% going to be a penalty. I will be shocked if it is not, Ryan. A clear cross check after the play. 
And yep, it'll send a Bulldog to the box. Ooh. A six on four will ensue now here with a minute nine left to go. I'm wondering if you are the Chippewas, what you're gonna do here, if you're gonna bring your goalie back out or if you're gonna keep Schroer on the bench for a six on four. CMU is gonna take a timeout here, talk it over. Ryan, a very, very, very lucky penalty on Adrian if you're a Chippewa fan. You couldn't have asked for something better. Unfortunately, obviously we didn't want to see Saudi get hurt there. Uh, she is back up. She is okay. It's good to see. Obviously, we didn't want to see her go uh, hit the ice there, but drawing a penalty was a must for CMU to put this at even a bigger advantage for them. What are you looking to see here on this? Are you, are you looking to see the goalie stay out, or are you, you going to see Schroer come back in here? I think, personally, for at least one possession, have all six skaters out there. And if they don't score, or if they don't at least clear, depending on what side the puck lands for the faceoff, it'll go in Adrian's way. Yeah, Schroer is going to stay out. They're going to put six. That's very smart. I really like that. Yep, Hutchinson coming back just to double check real quick. She's staying out there. Six on four. Ad skater advantage for CMU. Ryan, if you're going to score, oh, this it's is right the now. possession to score. As Gabriella Nixon will line up with Bria Hirschman. And away we go on the six on four. Hutchinson. A minute left. Tries to find the shot, finds Saudi. Puck is loose right in the front of the net. No goal, what a save by Emily Trotz. Saudi now getting into it with a bulldog. Little push and shove. I think they're trying to see if that crossed the goal line. They'll say it didn't. I think they're gonna keep Schroer out. Oh, a penalty on Adrian. Oh, and on, on Caitlin Williams. Oh. So it most likely will be a They'll call five it coincidentals. Hmm. So it'll still be a, oh, I take that back, Ryan. We have a six on three. Okay, okay, okay. I was about to say, they just got a new skater out. I was about to say, a six on three is kind of weird for coincidentals. Six on four, again, 50 seconds left. See, Hutchinson. Tries to take a shot from the right wing, unable to get it there, and Adrian clears it out. 45 seconds left to go. CMU needs to score here. They're looking at their top scorers. Del Rey is the number one target for them, but a Chippewa gonna hit the ice there. It looks like it was Brooke Huber who was able to hit the ice. Gabriella Nixon, 30 seconds left. Gabriella Nixon showing off her speed. Takes the shot, it'll go off. She was looking for Saudi to tap that right in and she was unable to get it. Hutchinson, shot, saved by Tratt. 17 seconds, and this might be it, but we don't know. The puck, the faceoff will stay in Adrian's zone. Nixon and Hirschman will face off. 15 seconds left to go here in this contest, as Hirschman Able to poke it away. And that'll in the empty power net. to it, Ryan. And with five seconds left to go, Adrian will make their series lead 11 to 2 as they come in here to Martin Ice Arena and play the spoils to a CMU team who has been on fire lately as both teams will now meet in the center of the ice to say, job well done. Job better done play today by the Adrian Bulldogs and what a what a game, just to say the least. We'll talk about this game and more on our post game show. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back with the post game show presented by Seamish Women Ice Ice Hockey dot com. So don't go anywhere. You're watching Women's Division Two Club Hockey here on CCHN.
Uh, we welcome you back here inside the broadcast booth, Ryan Donnelly. Parker Morrison, happy to have you here on this uh, late uh, Saturday evening. The final here from Martin Ice Arenas, Adrian 3, CMU 1. A very tough loss and a very important loss, I'd say, if you want to make a case for Nationals. And what do you think about this loss? Like, how do you think the players feel? How do you think just overall how the feeling here at Martin – just well, obviously, it's not a great feeling, especially when you're riding that high off of an Ohio State sweep, who is a very important team to take down. This Adrian team, also a very important team to take down. So, really, tomorrow, they're looking to bounce back, go uh, to Arrington, and finish off a split uh, to keep this one one-to-one -one on the series to make their case for Nationals. But let's head to our impact players real quick. Number 17 for CMU, Tate Hutchinson. Played phenomenal defense tonight. There is nothing you can complain about for her performance. She was clearing the zone left and right. She was block using her body to block shots in the lane. Nothing more that you can do there. It was just an all-around defensive breakdown for the Chippewas mm -hmm. that lost this game. Sandra Binkowski did not even play tonight. Um, <laughs> we thought she was going to. Wasn't on the list. Didn't end up playing tonight. For o or excuse me, not for OSU, for Adrian. OSU was last week. Bria Hirschman. She couldn't keep herself out of the box, but still managed to get the win tonight. So can't say much about that one. Madison Grimm, number 12, going to be our uh, first start of the game tonight. Got herself two goals on the board. Again, helped the Adrian Bulldogs to a very, very important victory for them. If you're looking at it for the perspective of a Bulldog, this was a must win. But if you're looking at it from the perspective of a Chippewa, tomorrow is a must win for them to get this split. So keys to the game real quick, as we mentioned earlier, Ryan, is improving the CMU power play. Unfortunately, not able to do any of that tonight. Their penalty kill, however, if we check that out real quick, clean 100%. Again, you can't do much better than 100%, so it's really the power play that they then have to work on there. So that key to the game will probably be another one tomorrow. Improving the forecheck, they did well tonight. We saw Hubert get a couple of nice checks there on the way. That isn't technically allowed, but... Refs let him play a lot from time to time, so that was good to see from her. And then score early. They did. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough for him. Mm -hmm. And we talked uh, We talked to see a couple of players a couple of weeks ago saying once they start scoring, they just keep on rolling. But today, when they scored early in the first period, it didn't look like they were on a roll, which, it's, which sometimes that doesn't work in their favor. But you just put your head down, you get to work, and then you, you just do it all again tomorrow. And Taking a look at our three stars of the player, uh, our three stars of the game. Our first player, our third star, is Gabriella Nixon, who did notch a goal today for CMU, the first and only goal with about nine, with about uh, nineteen fifteen gone in the first. Our second star goes to uh, the goalie for uh, Adrian Tratt, who had a phenomenal game, staying in her crease, just overall playing phenomenal hockey, just shots flying right in front of her, making herself look present. For Adrian, and if she starts tomorrow, she's going to be phenomenal. No official shots for her, as we unfortunately were not able to get those for today. But, Ryan, it was all CMU just pounding away at that net. The few shots that Adrian did get off, they let in, but the endless shots that CMU put up, Trout was able to save them, so you got to give props to her even if you lost. Emily Trout is our second star of the game. She had it once again. A phenomenal game and our first star we got to give it to Claire Ames she had two very important goals for Adrian especially that last I'd say weird interesting yeah. last goal uh, towards the end of the third she knocks herself uh, a, a double to die uh, for Adrian overall uh, Adrian takes over the three stars of the game and now taking a look at tomorrow's game CMU will be traveling to Arrington Ice Arena in on the campus of Adrian College where they'll be taking on Adrian once again for their second and final game against Adrian they were down to three games left here in the season one against Adrian and then two next weekend against the Loyola Ramblers uh, 430 puck drop will be uh, will be for CMU as they will be t traveling to Arrington. A very tough place to play, an NCAA Division III uh, ice arena. It, it really is, and Adrian is uh, – it. they're a hockey school. Yeah, You, you just got to play now and say it. They're a hockey school. NCAA champs, ACHA champs, D1, D2, D3, whatever you talk about. Although D3 for the men's side this year – 
didn't perform so hot against the Chippewas. Mm -hmm. The Chippewas will take that one. They scored, I believe, 10 to 1 on them the second night. 8 to 2 the first, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was flip flopped. I think it or was flip flopped. I okay. think it was 8 to 2. Uh, at Arrington and then ten to mm -hmm. one, which still either way is an like, absolutely astounding. Almost twenty to two ounce. in the total series. That's that's pretty rough for Adrian. But other than that, you look around. Uh, women's team, they're very good. ACHA D1, D2, they're very good. NCAA D1, they're very good. They have about twenty teams, Ryan. I mean, it's hard to keep track of them, but all of them ha are pretty good. A few of them winning national titles year after year after year. And you're right. Arrington is a very tough arena to play at no matter who you are, no matter where you're coming from. Arrington is always packed, and it's always, it's riveting, it's loud, and it's hard to play at. Arrington, once again, is like an act, it's like an actual arena. They got a scoreboard in the middle, they got a screen, they got the, the full back there, chair. Yep. It's a cool place to play. Parker and I actually went to uh, Adrian the last time CMU actually went there. It's a very cool arena, I'd say, and it's going to be a very tough place to play. And Do you have any thoughts on how CMU can compete in this game, especially tomorrow? Well, it's going to be really the power play that they're going to have to look at. We saw endless penalties coming on the Adrian side. A lot of them coming from our uh, third star, or excuse me, the second star, of the first star of the game today. <laughs> I don't know how the goalie would have gotten a penalty there without uh, being a little more influential in the game. However, it was endless penalties for the Bulldogs. CMU not capitalizing on a single one of them. A very unfortunate stat for them tonight. All 100% on the penalty kill, 0% on the power play, and unfortunate stat that they're looking to really turn around if they want to come in and get this series split tomorrow. And once again, the 430 puck drop uh, at Adrian tomorrow. It's going to be a very important game, not only for CMU, but for Adrian as well. Before we sign off here, just a couple thank yous uh, from us here at CCHN. We'd like to say thank you to More Hall Television for providing us the equipment, whether it's the lighting, the camera, or the on-ice mics, or the microphones, uh, for providing CCHN with the most high-quality equipment uh, to make us a high-quality broadcast. Our cameraman today is Sam Tavashinsky. Sam Tavashinsky. It's a hard name to pronounce, Parker. But well, you're doing not, better than Devin. Not, not, no. Oh, wait until it's Sam and Trevor are on the same. Uh, oh, I oh, will Trevor not Wires. be able to do so. And Sam has been a rock star. He's produced the first game, the men's game against Michigan, where they got the win, and then the, he's done camera for this game. He has been a rock star these past couple of weeks. And uh, Sam, you are a senior, and thank you for all the hard work you've done, Sam. And then our producer today, up pressing the ones and twos, Brody Finelli, who he has also been phenomenal. Although we had some technical difficulties, he has pushed through and he has done phenomenal. So Brody, thank you so much. It's glad to have. We're glad to have you back. And then our photographer Joe Grogan, who has been all over the place today. Make sure you keep to up to date on the uh, women's division two uh, social media pages, whether you. Uh, take a look at our Instagram or our X. Make sure to hit us a follow or make sure you subscribe to CCHN. Well, that is gonna do it. that's going to do it here from Martin Ice Arena on this very chilly Saturday night. But we'll be back tomorrow as the Met women's team will be taking on Adrian at Arrington. For my, Parker, uh, for my partner, Parker Morrison. Parker, you're leaving me hope? Oh, oh well, <laughs> well, you said my note. Parker, and I was like, well, that's, that's an interesting <laughs> thing to say. I only hear that from one person in my life, and that's my girlfriend. So when, uh, I, when I heard that statement, I got a little bit confused there. Kicked in fight or flight, but you know what? Um, it's all right. My, my fault. From my partner, Parker Morrison, <laughs> I'm Ryan Donnelly. From all of us here at CCHN, we would like to say so long and farewell from Martin Ice Arena, the final here being Adrian 3, CMU 1. Have a wonderful night and have a wonderful weekend and watch the Super Bowl and us too.